All right, hello everybody. Welcome back for another breakdown. And today we got a special one for you. This is an audience request and it really ushers in the next wave of breakdowns that we're going to be doing. Uh, very high level cinematographers that are delving into the commercial world. And coming with that is a new trend, right? 2016, you had anamorphic. 2017, you had the sky panels. You had crazy colored lights going on. 2018, let's go film again. Uh, 2019, full frame, right? Large format. 2020, what is it, you ask? What did you already miss the boat on, right? You're probably not doing this. You probably don't have access to the tools. You're not going to be this cool, right? And cinematographers, directors in the commercial world, you're selling cool, right? You're letting some company siphon away a little bit of what you've got and pepper it on whatever product they're trying to sling. That's, that's, the, that's the marketplace, really. Uh, and that is four by three. So we are delving into the world of four by three. We're going to talk about a little bit about how we got there, at least in my mind, what I'm thinking, because why would you do four by three, right? As we scroll through this commercial, you have to ask yourself as a cinematographer. And now this is, uh, was actually shot. I think I didn't do any research, but the uh, person that suggested this in the comments said shot by a very high level cinematographer who has actually won the Oscar, I think for, uh, best cinematography. So they are in demand. They've probably been shooting commercials for, uh, you know, 20 years. They've probably been shooting high end feature work for, uh, the same amount of time. You've done everything. You've shot with every lens, every combination of camera. Uh, you are completely, uh, out of just things that will make it different, that can be enjoyable. And the last thing you want to do is shoot just another, uh, commercial for a yogurt company or a shaving company or whatever it is that is boring and snooze fest. And then you have to imagine that you are there, you're sitting in your hotel lobby, uh, in some fancy hotel in Kiev and the phone rings, right? Interrupts the dinner that you're having with the Rothschilds. And you have to say, listen, sorry, you guys go in with the lobster, uh, and the caviar. I just need to take this call. Right. And as a veteran cinematographer, you're going to know when you get a phone call from some random number that you don't recognize, you always, always, always answer the phone in a different language other than whatever your native language is, right? If your native language is something that isn't English, always answer in English. If it is English, then you answer in something else, right? So you, allo, oui, c'est moi, allez, vas-y. And the person on the other line, you know, you hear some mumblings or something like this. Someone's calling you to contact you about a job. And then you say, vas-y, va, ouais, je t'écoute. Allez, bon, non, 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 ça va pas marcher là. Non, 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 ça va pas. Oh putain, bordel de merde. And then, the person on the other line, you know, they sputter a little bit. I say, oh, then you say, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know the only spoke English. Sorry, that's my bad. I was waiting on another call. Uh, anyway, uh, tell me about the job. And they say, listen, we want you to come and do a job. Uh, it's for uh, a car brand and uh, it's going to be really exciting. We got some talented people lined up and you're sitting there and you're going, man, I don't know. Like I got, I got this crazy feature coming up. That's going to be really exciting. Haven't seen the family in about six years. Maybe I could go do that. Or I got to be in Mexico city next week as well. It's probably not going to work. Right. So thanks for the call and the interest, but you know, I'm, not, I'm going to, it's going to be a, it's going to be a no for me. And then they say, Ooh, but okay. How about this? You can do anything you want. And then you say anything. And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything. You go, okay, let me think about it. Wait a few days. Call them back. I'm in. And I got a great idea. We go four by three and they go, yeah, 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 yeah. Four by three. Of course, of course. And then they go, they talk to the client and the agency and they show them examples and the client and agency go, what? That's a, uh, I mean, yeah, great, great. Right. We love their work. We love the cinematographer's work. We love the director's work, but what's with the black bars on the sides here as we play through this commercial, how come, is there any way we can do four by three without that? is what the client and the agency are saying. And then they go back, okay, to the director and the cinematographer. And they say, listen, um, love the idea. You know, love that you're on board. Is there any way we can do four by three without the black bars though? Do we need those? And that's when as a cinematographer, you just nip it in the bud and you say, listen, okay. You said I could do whatever I wanted to do, right? This is cool. If you want, this is the next level here. This is what we're talking about. This is the next step, right? The, this is what is going to separate your things. We're, we're allowing people to focus visually on the top and bottom more, right? Because we're opening things up just like your brand is expanding things. This is what the image is doing. And they go, yeah, okay. Uh, maybe, maybe just let me go back. And you say, well, if, if four by three is off the table, I'm off the table. Like I got other things to do. And then they say, yeah, okay, well, we'll go back. And then just as it's about to hang up and you say, <laughs> 
I mean, if you don't like four by three, you, you're probably not on, not on board with film, right? Right? You probably want to shoot. Don't tell me you want to shoot digital. <laughs> you don't want to make it this easy, right? And then the, the people on the other line go, ugh. Sorry, film? And you go, yeah, film. And four by three. And we have taken it to the max of what other people can't do. So we're going to do it. <laughs> and they go, okay. And then you end up with four by three in film, right? I'm sure. I'm only joking. I'm sure there's, you know, film is obviously fantastic. Stuck around for a long time. Uh, yeah, I think you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between film and digital. That's just me. But I'm sure there, there are lots of people out there like that. But that's how we arrive at four by three, especially when people are shooting it on the mini LF now that's come around. And that is really the, the full, you get the full frame look plus the four by three. It's just different. It's something where a lot of people can't normally do it. So let's do it because it's cooler. Right? Just like anamorphic. Anamorphic is expensive. It's hard to do. There wasn't many ways to do it other than shooting on film until the Alexa went 4x3. And then you could. It's like, well, let's do it because that's new. It's expensive. It looks different. Much like log when digital first came out. You're just looking for these things that are slightly different. And if you're a cinematographer and you're bored out of your mind, you're like, I don't know. Let's try 4x3. Right? Like, I don't know. Let's see if we can sell it to them. <laughs> so that's at least in my, in my head. That's what I'm imagining when I see 4x3. So it's different. Uh, it's unique. Probably also, I don't know if I've never seen any of these ads on TV before, but I don't know if they would actually be 4x3 on TV or if this is just like the director's cut. The other explanation, if you're going to shoot digital and go 4x3 or have a, jo have, a, have a job that ends up being 4x3, is that you just shot open gate on the Mini LF and then you, you know, you get somebody like the log situation back when digital was coming out and they just leave it as it is. And they go, this is how it was supposed to be. Anyway, uh, that's a long drawn an introduction to this commercial, which is actually very, very nice, right? I'm just taking the piss a little bit. Um, okay. And this is actually the cinematographer here. I don't know if you can see him, but this is really the cinematographer's wardrobe, right? If you speak another language and you need to have a heavy accent and then you need circular glasses and you need one of those little tiny beanies, one of those little tiny beanies. And if you have uh, overalls as well, you be rolling. Okay, let's go. So first up, uh, there's a little bit to talk about here other than the four by three and, and the jokes. And that is, we're going to start, this is the first shot of the thing, right? Opening shot. We got our little TV here, just a dolly out. But look what's going on in the background for the lighting, right? Same, even though this is, you just imagine this is somebody's face and it's the exact same lighting that you would have in the framework. We got level coming from the window that we can't see, right? So this level is this window is not really lit up. It's lit up from over here, a lamp going this way, which creates these nice shadows in the background, which creates the contrast, right? We want the light to dark to light to dark. We're shooting very, very shallow, which is always interesting with the film, you know, because cinematographers especially get so used to working with digital. Then you can see the focus and you don't have to worry about things being out of focus when you get back from the lab or something like that, that people are so used to shooting with a much shallower depth of field now and... Uh, so oftentimes when you see film stuff, even like feature film stuff, you'll see like some of the shots because the cinematographers are so used to just working with digital at, at shallower depths of field, they'll still do that with film. And then like, you know, somebody's entire face will be out of focus, but the ears will be in focus. You know, it's like they just miss by a little bit, but because you're so shallow anyway. So this is quite shallow. Uh, we got that look from the side. This is all frameworky stuff, creates some interest, shallow depth of field. Nice to have this in there and shooting into the L of the room, right? The L of the room is what makes the depth here. Without that, there's, there's very little depth. It just becomes very, very flat. Okay, we go on from there. Actually, let's go full screen now. We don't really need this. This is the reverse shot of our cinematographer. And this is a situation where, you know, you don't really want the thing to look like real life. We don't want the contrast ratios to look like real life. We want it to be heightened. We want to create a little mood. And to do that here, it's not always, it doesn't always have to be soft light. In fact, what you often find is as cinematographers progress and they can do more things that are more accepted, right? You're not feeling so nervous on set about like, is this the way that commercials are supposed to look? Is this what I, can I do this? Is anybody like you're looking around, you're waiting for word from the agency to be like, oh, it's too dark or uh, too wide or too shallow or something like that. Uh, as you move up, you can start doing crazy stuff. Well, let's hard light it, right? Like this is not, you're probably not going to use this sort of lighting for a Pantene commercial or some sort of uh, makeup commercial. But for here, we're going for gritty. We're going for real world. We're going for, uh, can I have some film grain, please? Uh, let's do that. Let's throw some crazy LUD on this thing uh, and let's make it special and shoot film for sure. 
Uh, so you can get away with a little bit harder lane. So you see that as careers progress. Now, who knows? Maybe that reverses. Maybe this becomes a fad and, uh, you know, soft lighting all of a sudden becomes more expensive or something like that. And we'll see it all reverse. But uh, for this point, again, doesn't have to be soft light, but the same concepts are there. And in fact, it's easier to see with hard light, right? The concepts, because we got uh, shooting into the shadow, shadow this side, light from here. Nice that he's not blocking her light, right? This is the blocking. This is where you and the director, this guy, he starts to want more FaceTime. So he starts creeping a little bit closer. You say, hey, hey back up, because you don't want to cast a shadow on her, right? Then in the background, not only, well, we could talk about the layers first, right? We've got this nice little thing in the foreground, bed. Then we've got person, face, face, little hand in there to create the depth. And then look at this, into the corner of the room. So you get light on this side, dark, light, dark line, dark, light, right? Just that variance across the way. So you're not shooting flat into anything, which keeps it interesting. The shape on the face keeps it interesting, right? You got this hard shape, you got this hard shape this way. Now, if this was me, and this was my wife, uh, and we were looking at our baby, and this was the lighting setup in there, you'd be like, nurse, can we get a blind close? Like, I can't see the glare on the screen. This is so hot. I don't need this, right? Like, let's, I want to see the image. I don't want to be so they go in, we're dollying in. Actually, we should probably watch the whole thing. We didn't really make it through the whole thing, did we? It's dark. Now it's light. And it's four by three. And it's still dark. Like This is dark. And let's remember, like these, these sorts of commercials, these are great for like your director's reel or for cinematographers. But it doesn't, I don't know. I've never seen a commercial like this on TV before, except maybe for the Super Bowl. Well, they will buy like a minute spot and they'll do one of these big ones. But this is like a four minute long commercial. And... You know, it's great for online purposes, but if we were really going to do it and it's a Volvo ad, you're going to see this shot and then they're going to have some government disclaimer. And then you're probably going to see, I don't know, pick a pretty shot in here of a little baby or something. And then that's it. But this is really just a lady. She's driving at night. This is probably the real ad here. And then you think, well, how do they get away with doing the, doing all the other scenes? It's like, well, you get to a certain level and they got to let you do those scenes if you are going to come and do the job. <laughs> So the people of the client and the agency are in the tent, like on the days, like uh, where they know they're not going to use anything in the real ad, doing all funky, crazy camera moves and lighting. And they're talking to each other and they're like, are we going to, are we using this in the ad? Like, are we going to do that? Uh, and then they go, no, no. Well, why are we letting them do this? We should just move on. Like, just, just let them have their moment. Uh, anyway, okay. So uh, this is all framework. You push in, you know what the deal is now. Uh, this sky, hello. This is what you want. A little bit of glow in the sky, slightly easier um, in certain countries rather than others, the amount that this is going to last. But again, you're creating depth in here, just a little tiny bit of level, nice warm glow, color up the sky, and we're laughing, right? And here we go. These, I mean, this is, this is quite contrasty, right? These levels, these levels here with how dark it was, plus let's park the the 18K right in the mirror because we want as many vintage flares as we can possibly get, right? The older the lenses, the better the story that you can tell when you're on set. And it's dark, smooch, and baby back the other way. Very, very dark. And then we're going to get into our grocery shopping here. And just look at the level that is in the foreground here. The level that is in the foreground, the smear that is on these lenses, like something crazy is going on with these lenses. Like the funkier you can get it. Again, that's part of like that four by three thing. The, the crazier you can get it over the line, it's more it's like, well, it separates it, sets it apart from other stuff. Don't you want to stand out in the crowd? That's like the selling point. Uh, again, even here we have framework where the light is up there and then it's shadow this way, right? Shadow towards the camera, shooting through here. These, my guess is that you put Titan tubes in there and you get out whatever this is. You know, you're going to have to shoot this when the, the whole thing is closed. So you don't want to be shooting exteriors again because you'll see that people are shopping at night or something crazy like that. We come in, crazy camera moves. Yes, pour it all in there. Everyone's having fun with the kid. Let's do more twists. Anything to create interest in something that is rather mundane, right? We got a kids and baby and car. We need to separate this thing. We need to set it apart. Let's twirl the camera. Let's have more grain. Let's have more noise. Let's do, let's have more flair. And let's have more movement. And let's go full montage. So this is, I mean, even stuff like this, right? We're in super close. This is, this is not framework, right? Still looks nice. Still looks great. 
not frameworky stuff, but I think in order to do this, this is like we are now at the Picasso level of uh, cinematography where you sort of throw out all the stuff because you're bored and you're good enough to do anything. Like you have the skills necessary, whatever location you're thrown with, whatever talent, whatever resources, you've probably been through it. You've probably shot something that was halfway decent and you can make it all work. So then you're trying, you're like, you're on the, you're on the, you're past the point of caring. You're on, you're on the next level of, well, let's just try it. See if it works. Like somebody's got to push the boundary. Might as well be us. Um, but they obviously know how to make things look nice anyway. So they come with that entire backing of experience of saying, well, this is what we can do. So it's a little bit more gritty. Again, you have to have a client and an agency and a director that are going to be like, yeah, let's, this is the look. Let's, let's run this look. Um, here, I mean, there's little bits of framework, even when they're doing this, right? We got the, whoops, we got the depth of this shot. It all matches as well. So we got the depth and we're still lighting from the window that we can't see is where all of the level is coming for from this shot. The reason it looks or it feels more natural or more what people say is natural is because it's not as as, it's not as cosmetic, which means it, like it's not as produced, even though this is very produced commercial, right? There's lots of things that are going into this commercial. There's something over here where we don't want to necessarily balance all the levels to be the exact same. We want it to feel a little bit more real where people don't look beautiful all the time. There's not some perfect key light like we've seen in some of the studio stuff that we've broken down where there's just beautiful key light on somebody every direction that they look. Uh, if you want it to feel slightly more... Uh, I don't know what the word would be, but uh, not as perfect, then this is the sort of vibe you're going for. You still have to set this up, right? Like this is still, you still got to light this thing. You still got to get the ratios right. You just have to know that in advance. So when we come here, same thing. Lighting from the window, if you wanted to make her, um, you know, like a shampoo ad, well, then you would just up the levels coming around. You'd up the wrap, you add a little edge. But here, we want to make it gritty. Well, we still need to hold the, the, the ideas of what makes a good image from the framework. We might not have to take every aspect of it, but if we look here, you got key, shadow to camera, looking off this way. I mean, blobby, really, really blobby. I can't imagine. I mean, maybe this is, maybe this is film. I don't know. I can't tell the difference between uh, mini LF and film or any Alexa and film. Like, I don't know. That's just me. I can't tell the difference, but this is really shallow. I mean, it looks like full frame. Like it looks like yeah, it looks bigger than Super 35, but I'm, I'm, I might be wrong. I'm probably wrong. I'm almost 100% wrong. But it's shallow. Come in here. Light from this way. Create the depth. Little point of interest back here. And we're bringing up whatever this light is over here that is lighting everybody up, even though they're fairly down. What's our... If we bump out of this, what is our exposure looking like? Oh, not getting anything here. Come on, cursor. Let's hit this button. So, you know, there's still level back there in the windows and everything else is in this you know we're sort of in the range but this is the meat of it down here where she is right well below um, middle gray from there let's go back to full screen um, so you still got depth you got interest you're balancing to out here with whatever that lamp is and then you're just deciding what look do you want here if you want more neg you're placing something just off camera this way because we never look that way so that's soaking up all the light that is coming from this way and again, the harder that you go with the light, the less close you need the neg. You just need closer neg if you're going with the softer light because it wraps around and it will spread more. So if you want to contain the spread, you need to really bring that neg significantly closer. Okay, from there, let's keep going. Uh, what do we got? There was one other one that I wanted to look at. This is all just hand stuff, driving, right? Well, this is like, okay. They also, sometimes the, the, the harder, grittier style is easier to see the framework elements. And this is, okay, we're gonna shoot this car commercial. What do we do? Just make sure everything is backlit. Just make sure it's backlit. And then for the hero moments of the car, make sure the sun isn't in the sky or the shot. But for this one, it's like, well, if it's backlit, let's just have that little moment where we go into full flare, crazy full flare. You can't see anything, can't see car. We're just setting mood there. Then here, more camera movement, keep it crazy. Right, as we go. More close-ups, more flares in shot, hard lighting, flashes, flashes. Even if we stop, though, on this wide, like, very, very uh, quick stuff. But if you pause it, you can still see elements of the framework, even at this level with this sort of style. So we got practical on. That practical is definitely not the lamp that is creating all of this light here, right? That is not responsible for this. That is up here somewhere. 
giving us this one. You can see the shadow on Old Mate here. Got that set up. Then we're shooting into the little L of the room back there. We got nice blue out the window, going crazy colors. We fill it in with some other lines to keep things interesting. And you got yourself your little area to the edge. Go, go blacks over here. Or actually in this room with this wall way over here, you probably don't even need to have neg. But blew it up outside. Like this is the crazy, uh, you know, this is like 1980s. This is like lethal weapon blue. Like that, that is nighttime. Okay, then we come around here. Now this is, this is framework as well, right? Sun, not in the shot. Sky ambient. We're inside the car, which has probably been, has blacks right behind here. And really taking as much level here as we can. She's looking this way. We're shooting into the shadow. We're letting all the soft light from the sky just wrap around her face and give us that little tiny eye light, right? Just wrap it and just reach it over there. You can just make it out. This little tiny line is what keeps things interesting. Same here, right? Don't show them too much, keep them interested. We just wanna make sure like this whole shot would be ruined or look significantly different if the sun was here in the sky or if the sun was even a little bit higher and all of these clouds were lit up really, really hot. You wouldn't want that. You're trying to balance to that background. Oh, that's a good one too. Come back here. This is, shears are important. Right, we got shears, light out there, whatever that light is. We got walk by in the foreground to create again some depth. And then we got that. This is the L of the bed, but shooting into the also the L of the room. I don't know if we make it that far. You can actually see, oop, just not cuts out before he's all the way. Somebody's a good editor. Uh, there's an L of the room over there somewhere. We're lighting through the shears, coming this way, and then something is coming this way, right? You feel the wrap on this cheek. That is not just this light over here, just randomly wrapping stuff around. There's something coming this way, which creates this beautiful light on the little kid. And then that other cheek light is, is like the wrap around. So you're using this edge from out here as this, and then you're wrapping it around. And if you want more darkness, you're putting neg up here, or you're putting neg in the ceiling, uh, just trying to limit where it's bouncing around to in a, in a white walled room. And again, shears, shears cool furniture. We're down low so we can get this bed. So we're creating depth. Then we have dad walk by this way uh, to again, create the feeling of depth of movement, keep things going. Uh, this is another one. We're in this office environment. And okay, well, let's light the wall with this one. Right. And then inside here, we'll do the Titan tube extension. Like you're just extending the light. This is also if you look at all the phantom thread behind the scenes stuff, you're going to want to light from the window, push it against the back wall. But then above the window is where you're actually lighting the people, where you're lighting the space, or you're setting the room tone, right? It doesn't have to be a key light. It can just be room tone level from above the window. But here again, L of the room. People out here, we got our lady here. She's getting lit this way, looking off camera that way. It's dark over here. And we also get a little bonus edge light. So we got key, neg, dark, dark, dark. Imagine if you were in an office and it looked like this. This is a scary place to be, right? Obviously, she's not having very much fun. Uh, but all still, even though we're in the four by three world, the film world, we're still using ideas from the framework. We're just not getting all the way down to the bottom of the list. Or we're just deciding, well, this is the look that we want. We want it slightly darker. We want it slightly grittier. Uh, we want the levels to be more separated. Here, more darkness. I think there was one more that we wanted to do. Car stuff, down the aisle, more car, snooze, fall asleep. Boom. I mean, this is even this last little end frame, right? Let's see if we got more car stuff. Same thing on the car. Like the car is easy because it's much like the, the bus or the airplanes that we've talked about before. It sort of limits you of what you, where you can possibly bring the light, like the dashboard or the, uh, the windshield blocks light from above. So you have to come this way. As long as you get the light, that side of the driver, go over there with the light so that it creates this and this, because this is what people will look at. These little points of interest, hottest thing in the frame by far, crazy Scandinavian skies in the background. Who knows if this is green screen or not. But just this is the look that we're going for. Like it shows you with the hard light, it, it, you're able to see the, the strokes of light significantly easier. So dark, dark, light in between, measure it out to whatever the ambient in the background is, right? You're setting the camera to the ambient in this situation that you cannot control. And then you're bringing in this light over here and you're say, you know, if it is a sky panel or something you can dim down, then you just dim it down 
until you until it looks believable. If this was a stop brighter, you'd be like, it looks like she's on stage. If it's a stop darker, she's too dark. You just find the right spot. You push it, right? You're sitting at the monitor or at the camera. You're talking to the uh, to the lighting team as you're doing this. She's like, now push it more this way. Push, 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 push. Yep, stop. Stop. That's good. Leave it there. Leave it there. Put the flicker on or do whatever effect that you're going to be doing for driving, and we're done. Okay? Same here, right? You get little tiny lights there, little tiny edge here, darkness, darkness, headlights out the front, just a good looking shot when you're over the shoulder like that. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode 4x3. Get ready because they're coming. There's more of them. Uh, let me guess. What's going to be in the other 4x3 commercials? Grain, significant amount of grain, vintage lenses, yes, hard light, yes. Sign me up for all of them. I want them all. Uh, okay, so hopefully it helps you learn something from this other than, you know, my my tips on answering the phone. Very important for a cinematographer. Um, and that'll do it. Okay, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.